morning, happy Sabbath. Uh, I hope your week was a good one. Mine was a blessed one too. And today we are going to do our third lesson for this quarter. We are still doing the, our lesson, the three cosmic messages or the three angels' messages. I keep saying that so that we don't uh, forget. And today we move to the everlasting gospel. We've seen Jesus swim certain losers. We've also gone through a moment of destiny. And today we're just going to look at the everlasting gospel and what is it and what significance does it hold in our Christian lives and especially us of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, before we go get into our study, I'll ask that the faith opens to us with a word of prayer. Great. Thank you. Let's pray. Uh, everlasting, Father. I thank you so much uh, for this opportunity you've given us to do this study mm -hmm. on the everlasting mm -hmm. gospel. Mm -hmm. I ask that your Holy Spirit give us insight and understanding into all that we study, that um, everything that we study uh, may be for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So last week we delved a bit in the um, book of Revelation chapter 14. Uh, before I forget, let's just say our names for the sake of someone who's just watching us for the first time. <laughs> I'll start from my right today. Uh, my name is Onsongo Raphael uh, mm -hmm. Nyamiswa. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Okay. Yes, my name is Zafa Trono. Thank you. Glad, glad to be here. My name is Jess Rono. I'm blessed to be here. God Th bless you. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to have you here and I'm sure the viewer is also happy to just go through this study with all of us. I'm Rubona Apio. So last week we delved in the book of Revelation chapter 14. But um, this week, again, we are going to go back there. And Revelation 14 verse 6 is our memory text. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. And this uh, uh, is just an, a resounding of a verse that we read last week in the book of Matthew. And... Growing up in the Jewish culture, or rather, this is something that even my grandmother keeps telling me, like, she's a very old woman right now, and I feel like she's gotten to this place where she, her main mission in, on this earth is to remind people of God's word. And so she'll tell you that, you know, in the book of Deuteronomy, God commanded the Israelites to tell these things, the laws to the children, so that they repeat, to put them at the doorpost of their houses. So she keeps telling us that, and she plays a very important, a very focal um, role in our lives that she keeps reminding us. And it's not something that she's the first one to do. I know other people have been doing it, and even the Jewish community used to do it, and for them it was Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Everyone, every child was supposed to memorize this. And that was like their shema. It was like a prayer for them. It was something that reminded them of this, their spiritual vision. At this point, I'll pause and ask, what is your spiritual vision? For the Jewish children, it was... Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Just echoing the first commandment, you shall not have any other God before me. And I'm asking again, it was something that they identified with. For them it was, Hear, O Israel, the Lord God is one. And it is because, again, their surrounding um, nations were just polyethists. They worshipped multiple gods. They worshipped the gods of Sidui Harvest, the god of fertility, the god of war. They had so many gods, but for Israel it was only one god. And this is something they reminded themselves about every other time. And now, our identity this time is found in the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 12, which I'll ask Raphael to please read for us. Revelation chapter 14, 6, verse 12. Revelation 14, mm -hmm. uh, from verse uh, 6 to 12, is... Uh, uh, um, I think what we know as the three angels' messages, mm. and I will read from uh, my translation, and it says, And I saw another angel flying through the heavens, carrying the everlasting good news to preach to those on earth, the everlasting gospel, mm -hmm. to every nation, tribe, language, and people, saying, Fear God, and, gi and give glory to him. 
Fear God, he shouted and, and extolled his greatness, for the time has come when he will sit as judge. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all its sources. And then another angel followed him through the skies, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she shall seduce the nations of the world and made them share the wine of her intense impurity and sin. And then a third angel followed them, shouting, Anyone worshipping the creature from the sea and his statue, uh, the beast from the sea and his, and, his, and his statue and accepting his mark on the forehead or the hand must drink the wine of the anger of God it is poured out and diluted into God's cup of wrath and they will be tormented with fire and burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and the lamb and the smoke of their torture um, uh, rises forever and ever and they will have no relief day or night for they have worshipped the creature and his statue and they have, uh, and they have been uh, uh, been tattooed with the code of his name. This is a, <laughs> this is a, an interesting translation. <laughs> let then uh, let this encourage God's people to endure patiently every trial and persecution, for they are His saints who remain firm to the end in obedience to His commands and trust in Jesus. This is from the Living Bible translation. <laughs> I'm sure uh, uh, a rendering of the same of the same text. Uh, uh, perhaps if I may if I may read it from the um, from the King James Version, uh, that last bit uh, says, um, uh, and the, from verse 11, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest day and night. Those who worship the beast and his image and who have received the mark of his name. Here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Amen. I'll talk about that, those verses just as we wind up our study, but as of now, I'll ask Jess. Why do you think people fear the book of Revelation? I dealt with that fear, by the way. While in high school, the first time I read the book of Revelation, it was out of fear. We had had this um, weekend challenge, and we were told, the earth is coming to an end. Go and read the book of Revelation. Why do people, have you, first of all, have you had that uh, fear of the book of, reading the book of Revelation, and why did you have that fear, and what stories have you heard around the book of Revelation that other people have said have also feared that book? Yeah. Um, first of all, I, I didn't grow up as a Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. I became a Seventh-day Adventist later on in my life. Mm -hmm. I grew up as a Catholic. Mm. And as a Catholic, I can't remember at any one point um, as a church reading the book of Revelation. Okay. But okay. in our home, I think there were some people who had gone around distributing literature mm -hmm. and they I can't remember which denomination was this but they had they had brought small books mm -hmm. that had um, um, photos of the beasts in mm -hmm. the book of Revelation mm -hmm. and I, I imagine that mm -hmm. in the last days will have beasts like those roaming on the earth and devouring us mm, literally mm. that's how i perceived it <laughs> and so for a long time in my whole life i think until i became a seven day adventist i just never read the book of revelation mm. i just thought this is a dark book mm. i mean the bible is filled with so many other nice things mm -hmm. to talk about god mm -hmm. like why stress myself with this other last part that mm. i do not really understand and it's very scary for me i don't want to see beasts roaming upon the <laughs> <laughs> of the earth and it being dark and mm -hmm. fire coming down mm -hmm. um, I just want to hear the good parts of Jesus mm -hmm. and to read about grace <laughs> <laughs> so growing up what is the book of revelation for you right now um, I think um, the lesson brings this out um, very well mm -hmm. that it is a book that is filled with a lot of grace mm -hmm. My husband here likes referencing and, and saying that, you know, if someone was in a building that is burning mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's about to come down, what is the most loving thing mm -hmm. to tell that person? Mm -hmm. Is it to tell that person, you know, let's just chill, it's fine, it's going to be fine? <laughs> or, is the most, or is the most loving thing to tell that person, get out, you know? Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation is like that. It's like there's this person who loves and cares for you so much mm -hmm. that he tells you what is to come mm -hmm. and tells you how to prepare. Mm -hmm. And when you look at Revelation chapter 1, mm -hmm. it starts by, by identifying who is the person writing this letter. Exactly. Like me growing up thinking out, oh, I want just to read about Jesus. 
But then in Revelation 1, before he even tells you about the beast and everything, mm. he identifies himself. The, what we learned last week, that mm. he comes and always tells you, I'm the son of man. So mm. here he comes and identifies himself mm. and says, mm. I am the one who has actually arisen, mm. number one. He says, number two, I am the one who is the first begotten. Mm -hmm. To know who he's, he's, part of, he's part of humanity. Mm -hmm. Then he says, I'm the one who died for you, and my blood is the one that has, is, has washed you. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm this person who, who meets your needs, and especially the needs of your salvation, Amen. which is what, because when you think of revelation, you wouldn't be scared of the judgment mm -hmm. if you knew you're on the right side. Mm -hmm. We only get scared because we think there's this sin, maybe I will be judged on the wrong <laughs> side, maybe something will happen and I will not pass through that judgment, you know, maybe I've not kept one commandment. But then he says, I know you think of the judgment and you're scared, but I am the one who has washed you mm -hmm. by my blood. Amen. So as you read these signs that will come through, just know that I am giving you grace, you mm -hmm. know. The, the lesson says that it is a grace-filled book. Mm -hmm. um, someone preached and said that there are seven beatitudes in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. It keeps on pouring out blessings for mm -hmm. the person who reads, for mm -hmm. the person who overcomes, mm -hmm. for the persons who obeys the commandments of God, mm -hmm. for the person who remains patient. Mm -hmm. It is a book where Christ walks with the, with the person. And then you can see Christ in every chapter speaking, mm -hmm. guiding, and then proclaiming a blessing. Mm -hmm. Speaking, guiding, and then proclaiming a blessing. Amen. There's a lot of hope wow. in this book. Mm -hmm. I'm just like I like what you've said. It is Christ giving the blessing, speaking, and just guiding us. I, I didn't, I've never seen it. <laughs> and even speaking of blessing, you know, uh, we, if we want blessings, we move to the book of Matthew. We go to the book of Deuteronomy, you know, but not Revelation. Wow. Viewer, you might start looking at Revelation as just is looking at it. Japheth, <laughs> what has Revelation been to you before growing up? Okay. Uh, I can say uh, before, and then I could also give after. Yes, maybe? yes, okay. yeah. Yeah. So before growing up, um, uh, uh, again, I was like my wife also was not mm. uh, born into a state church. Mm. Um, I was um, uh, in Sita. So uh, uh, I, w I, would, I would go there with my dad and my mom, mm. and early in the morning, then we'd go sit at the back, and then I just read like the interesting, cool things <laughs> that were in my mind mm. uh, akin to what I was seeing in the cartoons. You know, mm. the beasts and the creatures. And for mm. me, it wasn't scary; it was startling and interesting. You know, <laughs> uh, but I did not understand anything about the symbols, yeah. and, I, and, and in fact, even the thought of them being symbols was not a, something that I considered. They were just interesting images mm. and imagery that had just piqued my attention. Mm. Uh, Afterwards, um, uh, especially uh, as uh, some people who are more knowledgeable are taking me through this uh, 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 book, then I began to also studying for myself, and I saw that the word revelation itself mm. is um, is uh, a, an English rendering of the the word I think, which is apocalypse. Mm. There, yeah, mm. because uh, the word there is actually the apocalypse of Jesus Christ, mm. the apocalypso. Mm. You know, right now apocalypse means what? It means destruction, yes. damage. Mm. But the word apocalypso is actually, um, again, I'm not a scholar, but I believe it is from two words, apo and calypso. Calypso is veil and apo is to set aside. Mm. So apocalypso is the setting aside mm. of the veil. Okay. Uh, it is the unveiling. Mm. So in fact, so the book of Revelation is mm. an unveiling mm. of, us, of, of some secrets that mm. Jesus Christ is giving to us. Mm. So an apocalyptic message mm. is a message that is quite revealing. You know, mm -hmm. um, and secondly, uh, so this is what we find. Uh, what I personally find in the book of Revelation, it mm -hmm. is closely tied with Jesus Christ as the center of every single part of that book, okay. all the way from uh, uh, chapter one, two, mm -hmm. three. Christ as the high priest, Christ mm -hmm. as the lamb in chapter mm -hmm. four, Christ as the judge in chapter seven, mm -hmm. um, Christ as the one who is um, uh, uh, ruling in chapter twelve. Mm -hmm. Christ is present in every part of the book. Yeah, so it is basically a revelation about Jesus. Revelation Amen. is all about Jesus Amen. and nothing else. So, um, Raphael, how do we balance between the beast and the message of grace? So that we do not lean on the side of the beast alone. Because most of us do that. I know people, I have even Christian that this one is always looking for the beast in the river. <laughs> so how do we just get to balance so that we do not focus so much on the beast and forget the paramount person in the book of Revelation is actually Jesus. Um, I think, uh, I think uh, perhaps John thought about the same it's interesting that the, the book literally begins in John 1.1. 1, 1. Mm. 
mm. that this is the revelation of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Like from the word go, before he introduces you mm. to the beast uh, mm. that's leopard-like, to all these things, mm. he, wants, he first of all tells you, mm. let me introduce you to Christ. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the book, the book begins with Christ maintaining the church, mm. walking among the seven golden candlesticks. It, it speaks about Christ and his messages and his love for his church and how he leads it throughout the generations and throughout, 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 the, throughout the centuries. And so <coughs> the... The message is there for all of us, and it's clear, and it's a it's a book of hope. Mm. It begins with Christ, and even it ends with Him coming and he, and His second coming. And so uh, I think sometimes maybe uh, it is the way the book has been taught, mm -hmm. and sometimes more often than not, you find uh, some of these fears are things that have been inherited, have been passed on, because of people having a lack of a, uh, an, an understanding which they pass by. Mm. Same thing, maybe some people say, "Oh, mathematics is difficult," you know. Yeah. But I think. Because Even beyond English, <laughs> math, math, math is like a unit, math is in itself a language. Okay. Uh, That's it, how and, you see. <laughs> and, and I think sometimes we, uh -huh. there are uh, portions of, uh, of, 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 of thinking which we, we, we sort of inherit from other, mm. people's, other people's biases. Mm. I think uh, for, for the book of Revelation, more often than not, if we were to, um, having understand, understood uh, its keys and, 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 and its meaning, then we can be able to, uh, to unlock it and find that. It's well a very interesting book, mm. very enjoyable book, and it's a book that's about Christ and about grace. Amen, amen. So we move on to the everlasting gospel, and I'll just ask that uh, we read First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. I don't know who among us is there already. It says, uh, mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, mm. which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you this, uh, uh, you first of all, that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. Amen. And I'm just going to ask you, Zafeth, to take us through the Monday part. And I'll ask these questions as our guidance. Like, what is the gospel? Why is it called everlasting? And why must every human being on planet Earth be given the opportunity to respond to this gospel? I remember clearly that in our previous lesson, we talked that the gospel will be preached in all nations. So this gospel that is supposed to be preached, what is it? Why is it called everlasting? And why are we given the opportunity to respond to it? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this is uh, in line with um, uh, what my wife was talking about of uh, being inside a burning building. Mm -hmm. Now, in the burning building, mm -hmm. it would be bad news. If, you're, if there, is no, there is no hope, there is no exit, it would uh, be terrible just to be told by mm -hmm. the building is burning. In mm -hmm. fact, at that point, good news would be just sleep. Because at least it's better if, if there's nothing you can do and the building is burning, at least you can just sleep. Yeah? But now the good news would be, okay, the building is burning, mm. but there are people outside, there are, there are ladders, there are people who are coming in to, to help you, and you must be prepared. Mm. You are prepared now that mm. they are, when they are coming, you just jump on something, maybe, I don't know, a, 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 a net or something, but mm. you are ready mm. to be saved. Mm. And it's the same with uh, the good news or the gospel the good news about salvation mm. that the bad news is all of us have sinned all of us are sinners and all of us are in need of a savior mm. and the other bad news is that the wages of sin is in death a hundred percent that all of us are sinners wages of sin is death romans 6 23 romans 3 23 a mm. hundred percent these are biblical facts mm. but the good news is that christ himself is present and mm. able to give us salvation mm. uh, in the book of romans chapter 3 verse 24 uh, and 226 we see that we are justified freely by the grace of jesus christ through the redemption that is in christ jesus whom god has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of of god mm -hmm. to declare i say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and yet the justifier of him who believes in Jesus Christ. So the good news, therefore, and it is a good news that applies to every single person who has inherited this nature mm. from Adam. Mm. That means all the way from Adam, all the way to the last person who will exist uh, before Christ returns. All those people have must or, or, or 
once they receive this message, will receive that wonderful good news. Mm-hmm. And this is why it is called everlasting. Mm-hmm. Because it's the same message. It is not a different message. Mm-hmm. Because all of us find ourselves in the same uh, state. Mm-hmm. All of us are sinners. All of us destined for damnation and mm-hmm. destruction mm-hmm. unless we are saved. Mm-hmm. But the good news is that Christ himself has offered uh, this salvation freely for each one of us. Mm-hmm. And therefore, um, from here and from the text that we find in Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 8, where it says, um, Romans 5, 6 to 8, when, when we are with, without strength, when we knew not about Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in due time, Christ, Christ died, died for us. Mm-hmm. the ungodly. And this is such a beautiful text. It mm-hmm. says, for scarcely would a righteous man die, uh, 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 for a righteous man would one die. That is, maybe someone would die for a good person. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But uh, peradventure, even for a good person, someone would even dare to die. But God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, you Christ died, died for, for, us, us. for us. So that mm. means that we appreciate that the good news here, that everlasting good news, is that we have been justified freely by the grace of God. Mm. And the grace is a declaration of God's righteousness. That is right doing and right action God would give to us. Mm. He will impute upon us. And that the grace of God justifies those who have faith who accept Christ died for them individually. Amen. Yeah. And Amen. lastly, mm. that God's love is demonstrated in us while we are yet sinners. That is why before we even knew Christ, while we mm. hated Christ in our actions, mm. while we hated everything to do with everything to do with God, mm. uh, Christ died for us. Mm. Once we take all these things to heart, we accept, man, this is a wonderful message. Mm-hmm. This really is good mm-hmm. news. Mm-hmm. And I have a desire, therefore, to walk with God. And that's why God calls upon us to have faith in what he has done for us Amen. that the good news may become real in our lives Amen. 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 i remember the first lesson we talked and we came out clearly and strongly that our works do not merit us salvation right that salvation is actually an act of grace and sometimes we sin and we the way we justify our sin is the grace of god is sufficient <laughs> and I'll ask you this because I've also heard people I've also read about people attaching value to grace and saying this is cheap grace you know so what is grace in relation to what we are studying today this morning like the everlasting gospel what is the correlation between those two things you know if you extend grace to an individual you are giving them something that they do not deserve. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what grace is. Mm. And when you think of uh, the everlasting gospel, it's mm. that, first of all, we don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. Like, according to the law of God, mm. once you have sinned, mm. you ought to die. Mm. But then God extends grace mm. such that he says, I will take up that death mm-hmm. upon myself mm-hmm. and you will not die. Mm. And And for me what is interesting in this story of salvation and Mm. when you think of god extending grace Mm. is that god extended that grace without asking us Mm. in the beginning Mm. and he 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 planned out the story of salvation Mm. on his own Mm. put the whole plan together said in Mm. case any man sins Mm. in in case um, because i'm giving a man men free moral choices Mm. then i will do what Mm. then i will i will i will give them this opportunity Mm. to Mm. access salvation Mm. to be saved Mm. but for me it's it's that the grace was not just extended at calvary Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like calvary was was the revelation of it Mm. but daily it is continually extended daily it Mm. is continually poured out Mm. daily more power is given to me to make a different choice power is given to me to overcome not not just to be forgiven Mm. but to overcome sin that sin will not have power over me so that when christ would come Mm -hmm. eventually Mm. i will be found as he says without without spot without wrinkle being made perfect in him Mm. and it is a daily extension he pours it daily Daily. to us every day yeah his graces are new every Every morning morning. thank you yes something Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, that grace is not a cover for sin and this is discussed uh, (laughs) Uh, uh, in, in more detail mm. but Titus 2 verse 11 it says the grace of God Titus 2 11 mm. the grace of God that has brings appeared. salvation mm. has appeared to men and what is it doing it is <coughs> teaching us to deny ungodliness mm. and worldliness. Mm. so the grace of God yes it, it, it does uh, 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 offer an opportunity for forgiveness and and uh, repentance but it is, exists also to teach us 
its work is incomplete if all it does is someone's opportunity for forgiveness. Mm. There is that part of, mm. of, of, of being taught how to deny ungodliness exactly. and worldliness. Yeah, thank you. I, I think I love that when you say that it is not an opportunity for us to... Only, it's not, the grace is not just saving us from sin. It is also teaching us. So I think we could just move from the point where we sin intentionally and say that grace is sufficient <laughs> and move to perfection in our character. So the story of grace, Raphael, the three angels message is a story of grace. How is that a story of grace? Please take us through the Tuesday part. Indeed, um, I think just to refer, refer to uh, what Japheth has said mm -hmm. is that we are saved by grace. Ephesians 2 8, we are saved by grace mm -hmm. uh, through faith mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. so that nobody can do what nobody can boast mm. but even uh, as another aspect of grace is growing in grace mm -hmm. that uh, once grace has sustained us uh, has 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 blotted out the record of our wrongs mm. has 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 given us a right footing with god mm. uh, then uh, we are also required to grow in it and by growing in it it's by uh, the as, as we've read to us from titus rejecting all ungodliness and, mm. and, and walking in newness mm -hmm. of life and in obedience mm -hmm. uh, the commandments of god and uh, <clears throat> Basically, um, the three angels' messages are a, are a story of, of grace. They, they tell us the story of a Savior's love that is beyond measure, that he goes uh, the extra mile. And uh, as, as Japheth says, he unveils to us new messages. He unveils us. He tells us the building is burning. He tells us these are the things that you need to do to safely exit, uh, that certain exit points uh, are, have not yet burned, and we can, still, we can still make it out of the building. So it is a story of boundless and fathomable incomprehensible and dying and ending an infinite love mm -hmm. the story of a father's love for his creatures indeed we are told that the controversy did not find god by surprise mm -hmm. you know the fall of man and uh, perhaps even the fall in heaven may, were not things that were beyond uh, beyond god in them but just in case they go astray I'm going to make a plan for them to come back mm -hmm. again. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he's not spiteful. He's not. He doesn't say ah, they, if, they, if they if they are lost, I can make a new creation. Mm -hmm. But he loves so much that he he he, he makes a backup plan, and the backup plan is. The story of grace now. Amen. It's a story of grace. It's a story of, of Christ coming. It's a story of, 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 of the Father and Son sitting in holy union and making uh, before the creation of the mm. world, which is after they fall in heaven. Mm. Um, and, they, and they make a covenant and they say, these men and women that we're going to make, this rest, mm. what if they fall? Mm. And Christ commends himself and, and commends himself and says, I will come out, I will come and die. And therefore, the gospel is called the everlasting gospel mm -hmm. in that it is timeless mm -hmm. it was there from the beginning it will it, it is there today mm -hmm. and it will be there even past uh, past the trumpet sounding the story the gospel story will always be there mm -hmm. Christ as our savior and in fact Christ himself says uh, he will even take human form forever uh, to be identified with this uh, with this species mm -hmm. forever to be identified with this race of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of his creatures who, who, who fell and so uh, if we were to uh, perhaps read the book of Revelation 13 and verse 8, it says, All who dwell on the earth shall worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written for, from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slain. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, these things were there from mm -hmm. the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. as in, we know God knows uh, the future. God has an understanding of the future. Mm -hmm. And he tries to guide it in the most, in, 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 so that it, it, all of us can get to the to the most uh, the best possible outcome mm. for all our lives mm -hmm. and so um, written from the foundation of the world first peter uh, 1 verse 18 to 20 says knowing that you are not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile ways of life inherited from your forefathers but with precious with with the precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless the blood of christ for he was foreknown before the foundation of the world but has appeared in these last days for for our sake mm -hmm. and so um, it tells us generally that the everlasting gospel speaks of the past the present and the future mm -hmm. that um, god made moral beings intelligent beings with free will and the plan plan of redemption was not an afterthought heaven was not in crisis mm -hmm. but they simply changed gears mm -hmm. They simply changed gears. Uh, the, 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 the driver has not lost control yes. of this vehicle. Mm. And if we don't jump out mm. and uh, we abide by the safety rules, mm. we buckle in mm. and we, we hold on tight, mm. he says he shall safely deliver us. Mm. 
mm -hmm. uh, through uh, to, to eternity. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. he speaks not only of the past and the present, but also the future hope uh, that we have. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1 and verse 4 says, just as he chose us before mm -hmm. in him, mm -hmm. before the foundation of the world, that we will be holy, blameless before him in love. Mm -hmm. That God chose us. God chose us even before he knew before we knew him. Mm -hmm. God chose us even before he had created us. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has put in, in in plan all the plans. And so perhaps it speaks to us also. Um, you know, sometimes in life, um, people may look down upon you. Sometimes in life, uh, maybe even your parents, uh, your pregnancy, they were not expecting. Mm -hmm. But in the mind of God, mm -hmm. you were never an afterthought. <laughs> in the mind of God, you existed. Mm -hmm. So we are here. We were created. We have a purpose. We have a father, we have meaning. And so um, it also cuts across the grain of things like evolution mm -hmm. that tells us that our world is an accident. You know, mm -hmm. We are loved. We have, we, have a, we, have an, uh, we have a father who loves us. Mm -hmm. We have a father who thinks about us. We have a father who has got a plan for us. Mm -hmm. And that plan is fulfilled and told to us in the everlasting gospel as contained in the book of Revelation 14, verse 6 to 12. Yeah, thank Amen. you. So Raphael tells us that we are not an afterthought. Like, it's not like... You know, at least what scientists tell us, there's a big bad theory that accidents happened. You know, that's how we found ourselves in this world. But Ephesians 1 4 says that before the foundations of this world, God had thought about us. And the verse I encourage myself every other time is Jeremiah 29 11. God has the best plans for us. What hope does it give you to just know that you are not an afterthought? <laughs> just. I think, um, I, I don't know, especially for a structured person like myself, mm. I like to know a plan. <laughs> and I, I, I'd like to know that there's someone, someone has a plan. Mm. Um, I think the idea of, of, of knowing that someone has planned your very own existence mm. and and planned that you exist mm. means that there is hope for you mm. and if i consult the owner of this plan mm -hmm. means that there, there is as the book of jeremiah says there's an expected end mm. there's an there's an end that is assured mm. if i follow the plan of the one who instituted it and put it together mm -hmm. i think it's exciting to know that things happening in my life if i rely on this person are not so random mm. they're not so random but they are planned out and they are carved out for my sake mm. so that I attain this expected end. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Robert tells us that, you know what, it's not like the driver of the vehicle has lost control. He just changed gears. And he tells us there was a holy union between the father and the son. <laughs> and they are thinking, what if this happens? And the son just gives himself like, I'm willing to go and die for them. So what does that give you like, what does that speak to the person that feels like, you know what, um, I just think that this fall of man, this fall of the Lucifer is something that it's God foresaw it. Why couldn't he control it? You know, he should have stopped it. Why are we suffering? I bet there are days I suffer and I'm like, God, <laughs> is this really, was this part of the plan? Is this the part of process, you know? Speak to that person, yeah, Zafi. So, uh, uh, to that person, I would say that a um, mm. both fortunate and unfortunate consequence mm. of the fact that God has given us the gift of free will mm. uh, and that, we, that our choices actually matter mm. is that unfortunately we can choose badly mm. and choose poorly. Mm. So in the case of Satan, what God could have done maybe is he could have just made it impossible mm. for Satan to possibly uh, do anything other than uh, the exactly correct thing. Mm. But then at that point, the Satan is nothing like um, other than a robot, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but instead, what does God want? God wants us, uh, all of his creations, all of his creatures, to have uh, the capacity to make choices. Mm -hmm. And these choices can have consequences that are positive or negative. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, what God foresaw in the choices which were wrong that he could see, because mm -hmm. God could see all things. He could see the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Is that he offered a way of escape for all those who have made some bad decisions mm. or have even been found in places where other people made bad decisions because mm. somebody else's bad decision can affect you mm. god uh, foresaw all those things and provided a way of escape which is calvary mm. so uh, so uh, even unfortunately um, uh, we are living uh, in the uh, e like as a result of the consequences of other people 
and and of also our own consequences we can still have faith in uh, in the power of the cross to save us ultimately mm -hmm. thank Amen. you thank you um now Jess, uh, we are moving into the Wednesday part, and in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, it says that, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Clearly, this is just not a small, a small thing. It's not a small endeavor. We are talking about every nation. You know, we are talking about every tribe. There are so many tribes. Some have not even been documented. I hear some even got extinct before they could even be documented. Tang, and we are talking about people. We are at billions right now as the population. And we are being told that I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to every. And it clearly tells us that this is not something small, it's something big. Please talk to us about in all the world in the, in, in the light of the everlasting gospel. You know, I love this book. Mm -hmm. Because first, it's, it's, it's Christ speaking. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I think just right now, I've just remembered the book of John chapter 15. Mm -hmm. Christ speaking to his disciples and then tells them, mm. You know, I no longer call you servants, mm -mm. but I call you friends. Imagine. And I call you friends mm. because I tell you mm. the things that I am doing and I am that I'm going mm. to do. Mm. And then afterward, he tells them, mm. therefore, go forth and bear much fruit. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Christ is doing in the book of Revelation here, mm. just as he did in John 15. He's like, you're my friends. Therefore, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Mm. And I want you to go forth and bear much fruit. You know, mm. there are people who want to at attain grand do grand things in this life <laughs> and attain big things and do great things mm. but i i don't think there is a, there is a work um who, that is more grand than mm. this one a higher that, calling exactly that mm -hmm. covers the whole globe mm. and and reaches generations after generations you know mm. you know when you think of like the work of isaac newton for example mm. it has influenced several generations mm. up to our time mm. but the generations before him did not know about gravity mm. for example mm. but the work of christ since the beginning mm -hmm. has been enveloping this mm. earth mm. The, uh, there's no there's nothing as grand as what we have received in the gospel mm -hmm. and so the i the, the, then the call by by christ is this i'm giving you this everlasting gospel mm -hmm. and the book of revelation says you know go go ye therefore i think go forth just the same way it said it said in the book of matthew go mm -hmm. ye therefore and proclaim this gospel mm -hmm. and it's going to be a thread that just goes around the earth mm -hmm. for me um when you think of the book of revelation and you think of your sins first of all your sins scare you revelation mm. scares you with the judgment to come <laughs> but i think there is no better way mm -hmm. as a christian mm -hmm. for you to to overcome mm -hmm. and for you to to stop fearing than to be enveloped and be made busy with the mm. with the work of God. Amen. You know, Amen. I always I, I realize that every time I'm I'm struggling, I'm saying, "Oh God, I have no money." Whenever I meet someone who has a greater need than me, you and have. I give, <laughs> I forget about my problems. Mm -hmm. And I think if we go forth and stop being self-absorbed, yes. and and we think of something mm -hmm. bigger, other people who mm -hmm. are around us and have a greater need, mm -hmm. you end up forgetting about yourself. You need look smaller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you end up even finding that you're relying on God much more. Mm -hmm. And you stop focusing on self and me. I think a bigger, a greater, a great cure mm -hmm. for the sins we struggle with and mm -hmm. for the difficulties we face is, is that we don't serve others. Mm -hmm. I think the gospel calls us, you know, step out of yourself, go serve others yes. with this gospel yes, and, yes. and your, your troubles will mm -hmm. diminish. Mm -hmm. And I will, I will save you mm -hmm. as you continue serving. Amen. Amen. So those people that usually just take the back seat in this, uh, in this, at this point of time, I think you are doing a disservice to yourself and to the 
bigger picture which is spreading the gospel the everlasting gospel and as just says it we need to get out of our comfort zone we need to get out from the point where we are just thinking about ourselves and thinking about others actually jesus was serving so why do we need to sit down and we are looking at him as the author and the finisher of art of our faith and we read in matthew chapter 19 where um, chapter 28 and I'll read all through verse 20 go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even to the end of end so Japheth we've realized that this thing is not small as we think it, it is a big business so in your small endeavors even as you are preaching, even as you are ministering to some small, even if it is one person, how are you to live knowing that there is a bigger, I'm, I'm part of a bigger picture of an everlasting gospel, preaching to the whole nations, tribes, and every tongue? I think uh, it is by not uh, placing yourself inside a small box. Mm -hmm. uh, you never know how God will use you. Yes. Uh, for instance, uh, um, uh, the woman who put in two mites. Remember mm -hmm. when Christ was just s sitting there and mm -hmm. watching people who are um, uh, uh, donating and giving tithes and offerings to the temple. Mm -hmm. What happened? Mm -hmm. That um, uh, the people who are wealthy and wealthy and so forth, they mm -hmm. gave all of their, mm -hmm. their, their, their wealth, not even all, a small part of their wealth, which is a, a large amount of money, mm -hmm. but for them was, was, was a small amount. Mm -hmm. This woman came in. And, and very quietly, hoping no one would see her, she just threw in two mites. Mm -hmm. you know? And Christ said that was the sum of all of her money. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Mm -hmm. That small testimony of that woman mm -hmm. has, has, has been a, a, a immortalized inside the Bible. Mm -hmm. And the scriptures having gone out all over the world, mm -hmm. that message of, that, uh, of her small ministry mm -hmm. has gone out everywhere. And now everyone has been encouraged to go out and mm -hmm. give. That mm -hmm. is one way in which uh, you shouldn't box yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you have no idea um, the small amount of thing that you think is small mm -hmm. uh, uh, will do for the gospel. Amen. Uh, your small way of witnessing, your mm -hmm. small way of ministering, mm -hmm. in, a, in, in the, small, the smallest of ways, mm -hmm. you have no idea the ripple effects mm -hmm. and how effective it can be in mm -hmm. spreading the gospel Amen. throughout the world. Amen. You never know the small thing that you're doing, the ripple effects that it's causing. And I'll just ask Raphael, have you ever had an experience like a life experience through missions where you thought that this is just a small mission and then it it ended up being big and could you just share with us <laughs> i know it's like uh abrupt <laughs> but if you have it's okay to share mm -hmm. uh, i think generally um maybe i'll share an experience somebody shared mm -hmm. and it's from chaplains here in which we uh I think once, you know, sometimes we go for chaplaincy, we've been involved in chaplaincy for, for, long, for so long. Mm. But once, once now, after chaplaincy, people are giving, um, it was like a, it, I think it was like, a, I don't know what the setting was, but uh, beneficiaries of the chaplaincy department, mm. when they were speaking, a young lady came forward and said that she was at the, at the verge of almost committing suicide that mm -hmm. in school. And, uh, and then one of, the ch one of those chaplaincy sabbaths, she just attended church mm. and she was encouraged. Amen. And, uh, and, and that thought has, had, uh, had uh, was removed from her mind and she finished school and she joined campus mm. so therefore i realized you know sometimes you may feel oh it's a bother for me to go to a certain place it's a bother mm. for me to you don't really see the the power of your of what you're doing in, mm. in, uh, then and then mm. but um, behind the scene god is actually using you yes. to to convince yes. to convince mm. to convict mm. and to comfort mm. and so uh, that usually encourages me and there are many other things perhaps which only heaven will show mm. as the impact of your of, of, of even kindness of just being kind of saying mm. hi you know mm. and, and and of of telling somebody that i see you and god cares for you mm. and, and god has a plan for you mm. those, those small small things you may you may not really know much mm. you know sometimes you you, are, you feel like maybe you should do a course in theology or that but the little that you have take it uh when you saw it to all the earth all means even the little imagine uh, even the little so <laughs> use it um, and, and i'm sure it will be a blessing amen and put it in god's hands amen thank mm. you so we've been told not to put ourselves in a box we've been told that the small things that we are looking at small might actually save someone's life someone is at the verge of committing suicide but just because you made that decision to to join that mission to speak that day you know 
their life has been saved. They have made the right decision in regards to their life. And as we come to the tail end of this discussion, the Thursday part, I just want us to come together and contribute, having in mind that we are at the tail end of our TMI mission here in New Life. And I'm looking at it as a mission movement. Everybody should be involved. Total membership involvement. Everybody from the children to the uh, youth to the older people and we have just been asked we've been asked share share this message and at this time and age where we have technology we have the advantage of technology my boss keeps telling me leverage technology <laughs> and i'm looking at it how can we leverage technology in sharing the word of god how can we be part of this great movement we've been made to understand that we are not doing just a small thing we are doing a bigger thing so how can we be involved yes could you please go first how can we get involved in this movement in this mission mission movement um i think that last part brought out something that i found interesting in terms of reaching out to others mm. um um, it, it gives this uh, the story of um, J. N. Andrews, mm. who was one of the pioneers of the Seventh Day Adventist Church, mm. and it is recorded that he was the ablest man among mm. our ranks. The, yeah. the, if you read his books, mm. he writes with an intellect and wow. with depth mm. that many of us have not even attained to. Mm. Yet he was the first person to be sent out to Europe, where there was there were no Adventists, mm -hmm. where the message had not gone out, mm -hmm. and you know. There are some of us, uh, or maybe you may be thinking, um, I am a, I'm a doctor, I'm a minister, <laughs> I am so and so, I have this rank, I have that rank. Mm -hmm. let that, that, that message, let me just leave to Raphael and his chaplain. <laughs> <laughs> that, let them do the work, I'll just give them money. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine the ablest person um, in, the, in, the, in the Seventh Day Adventist Church? Mm -hmm. the, a brilliant person, mm -hmm. a, a, an amazing person, was the one to go to an unentered place. Mm -hmm. It means every single one of us can participate and should participate. Mm -hmm. it, is not too, it is not a work that is too low for you or too high for other people. It is the grandest work. Mm -hmm. If you want to be part of, of what the king is doing in these last days, you want to be there to celebrate and say, I, pl I participated, I did something. Mm -hmm. Not I sat on the sidelines and waited for the chaplaincy report to come in <laughs> and I will just say yes my money did something no <laughs> but that I actually also went out and mm. spoke to an individual mm. I actively participated in God's amen. work it is a call for everyone amen uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with regard to that question, I would say um, uh, when you talked about leveraging technology, actually mm -hmm. uh, this thought came to my mind. Mm -hmm. um, what happened mm -hmm. with the early church? Mm -hmm. We were told that the early, for the, the, during the time of the early church, the gospel had been spread through all of the known world mm -hmm. at that particular mm -hmm. time. Yes? So what exactly happened? Yes, we know that the Holy Spirit did work mightily. Mm -hmm. And even sometimes in a day 5,000, another mm -hmm. day 4,000. Yes, 3,000. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, how are they able now to go, let's say, all the way to parts of uh, the Celtic Isles almost mm -hmm. within maybe uh, uh, 100 years uh, from the time of uh, Christ, mm -hmm. all the way down to Africa, to the parts not really to India but close there, mm -hmm. um, all the way to Spain, uh, uh, past Italy into Spain. How was the gospel able to to be spread all the way mm -hmm. when these guys didn't have trains, they, they, they didn't, didn't have, have locomotion mm -hmm. because they were leveraging the technology, which was the influence of the Roman Empire Imagine. at the time. The fact that they were in a place where they could take advantage mm -hmm. of, of, of the freedom as a Roman citizen, mm -hmm. or at least the fact that that empire was one cohesive whole. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that apply to us today? We have technology today that we can use mm -hmm. for, the, for, for God's glory. Mm -hmm. um, many of you who are watching this are watching this uh, using devices. Mm -hmm. You're watching over the internet and stuff. Uh, this is how we as God's people can use technology mm -hmm. for God's glory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we can never discount uh, uh, something which is the supreme multiplier, force mm -hmm. multiplier, which is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But God has given us tools and gifts and uh, some implements, some resources in our hands that mm -hmm. we can use for God's glory. Mm -hmm. The technology that we find that is accessible to us. Mm -hmm. Let us use this and further the gospel mm -hmm. as, uh, in any way that we possibly can.
And you don't need a YouTube channel to spread the gospel. You have WhatsApp <laughs> status. <laughs> you can post a verse for someone. You don't know who you are serving. And in the light of that, I'll just ask Nathan, why do we need TMI? We are having, we've been doing TMI for three weeks. Every evening we've been having this program. It's being aired. People are coming to church. Why do we need it in regards to our lesson, a mission movement? I think generally, um, I think one of the requisites of uh, the second coming, in fact, uh, I think Peter writes in Second Peter chapter 3, he says mm. that we, we also have a responsibility to hasten the coming. Yes. Because there are, certain, <clears throat> there are certain things which Christ had said mm. uh, that uh, uh, must happen mm. before he comes. Mm. And one of them is what? The spread, spread of, of the, the gospel. gospel. Mm. The spread of the gospel to mm. all nations, all kindred, nations. tongues and people. Mm. Mm. And so... Um, our, we simply, by engaging in TMI, we're simply being good workers. Mm. We're simply following the master's orders, mm. even as we have been, we have been sent uh, in the Great Commission in Matthew 28. Mm. Go ye and, uh, and teach and baptize and do all that. And so, um, as, for example, like, uh, just a thought from what Japheth was saying, mm. you see, Paul wrote letters. Mm. Uh, but how many letters did he write? <laughs> when he's writing to the Corinthians, is he writing many letters mm. or is he, did he write one letter? One. He probably wrote one letter, mm. but people transcribed it. Imagine. People preserved it. Mm. And somebody, somebody belabored to write. Until now, we have all these copies that we, mm. we have. Somebody preserved that initial manuscript. Mm. And, and so they were leveraging on the, on, the, on the technology that was back then. Mm. But today we live um, in an age where beyond, uh, beyond the printing press, in fact, I think the, the uh, print media is struggling. Uh, we are in a digital age where uh, I, I, I just the tap of a, of, of, of a screen I can communicate with my relatives in the US or wherever they are in, this, uh, in, God's, in God's world as long as there's a satellite and a network to, to connect us. And so I think uh, the call is for all of us that we can participate. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are many ways, there are many ways of, of, of doing it. Today is the podcasts, uh, mm -hmm. YouTube is one of them, mm -hmm. there are many other digital platforms and mm -hmm. things to do. And even traditional ways still mm -hmm. work in certain areas which are unentered and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and may require you to be there physically. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, for this reason then we, we go forth. And far and beyond uh, it being a, being a command, Paul says, the love of Christ constrains us. Amen. Beyond it being a command from, from God for us mm. to, to participate in the work. But if we've truly appreciated who Christ is, his position, his place in our lives and the things that he has done for us, then, in fact, uh, Sister White writes in Great Controversy and says, the very first impulse of the converted heart is mm. to lead others also to Christ. Amen. So it, it's, it's almost like uh, you can't help yourself. Mm. It, it comes from within. It's almost natural that mm. you will go and to seek uh, and save the lost in accordance with the commandment. Thank you so much. It's been a wonderful discussion. It's been a wonderful study. And I'll just ask again my first question. What is your spiritual vision as a Christian? What is your personal mission statement? Christ had is, he came to the world to bring, to, to heal the brokenhearted, you know, to bring back, to restore. That was his mission statement as read in the book of Isaiah. And in the light of the everlasting gospel, the, t the topic we've been studying through the week, I'd just like to say here is a mission so grand, so large, so great, and so comprehensive that is all-consuming. It demands our best efforts and requires our total commitment. It leads us from preoccupation with our own self-interest to a passion for Christ's service. It inspires us with something larger than ourselves, and it leads us out of the narrow confines of our own minds to a grander vision. So I'll just ask you are you just going to confine yourself are you going to receive the gospel and hide it you know we are told you cannot be receiving the light and putting it under your seat you need to let it light you need to spread the gospel so i'm asking us i'm imploring us that we have received the gospel. The three angels' message is a call for us to get out of our comfort zone and spread it. Let us hasten the second coming of Christ. If you're not tired of the earth, I am tired. I don't know if you're tired, but I am tired and I keep asking, Oh Lord Jesus, how long before you return? So we'll close our study with a word of prayer from Jess. Father, we thank you so much for the everlasting gospel. We thank you that we know that we were not an afterthought. That, Lord, you thought of us and you planned for us and made provision for our salvation. We thank you that you have even called us to participate in this work, to go out 
and share this gospel with those who have not received it. We ask for strength, we ask for power, we ask for wisdom, that Lord you may reveal to us areas and, and people who we can minister to. I pray that you will be glorified, O oh God, on the, the rest of this Sabbath, for we have prayed, trusting and believing in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.